You are listening to the IoT for All Media Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the IoT for All podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Chacon, and on today's episode, we have Andre Jacobs, the Chief of Product Engineering at IoT.next. They are a company out of South Africa that is focused on demystifying the Internet of Things and have developed innovative solutions to offer customers opportunities to implement groundbreaking strategies to drive business value and grow return on investment across the board. Um, we have a great conversation. Um, we talk a lot about integration within IoT. We talk about why it's the key to success in IoT. Um, also, how have integration capabilities evolved? And also the challenges that their uh, companies face when it comes to integrations and bringing in IoT solutions into their, into, their, um, into their business, whether it's fear of replacing devices, whether it's the educational component, resource constraints, security, you name it. We get into it. Um, but all in all, great conversation. Really recommend listening to this entire episode. But before we get into this episode, if any of you out there are looking to enter the fast-growing and profitable IoT market but don't know where to start, Check out our sponsor, Leverage. Leverage's IoT solutions development platform provides everything you need to create turnkey IoT products that you can white label and resell under your own brand. To learn more, go to iotchangeseverything.com. That's iotchangeseverything.com. And without further ado, please enjoy this episode of the IoT for All podcast. Welcome, Andre, to the IoT for All podcast. Thanks for being here this week. Thanks for having me, Ryan. Yeah, it's fantastic to have you all the way from Johannesburg. Um, Enjoying a nice summer day while we're here in the in the winter cold. So I appreciate you taking the time. Um, let's start off by having you give a quick introduction about yourself, your background, experience, things you think would be relevant for our audience to get a better sense of who you're listening to. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks again for having me. My name is Andre Jacobs. Um, I'm the Chief of Product Engineering at IoT.next. Um, I've got a very much uh, a software development background. Um, been in that for, for many, many years. Um, I've joined IoT.next um, pretty much in the early startup phase, um, about six years ago now, the end of the 2015. And uh, yeah, it's been an exciting, exciting journey for, for me and, and the company to, to date. Fantastic. So let's talk a little bit about IoT.next and what you all do, what the overall focus is. Um, you were involved in the, in the IoT Global Awards for Virtual Raptors. I'd love to hear a little bit more about that, and then we can dive into kind of the meat of the conversation. Sure. Our company is um, focused on hardware and software development, um, specifically in the Internet of Things space. Um, so we provide quite a comprehensive set of um, products. Um, we've got um, hardware products, um, software, firmware, and we pretty much play in all the la layers of IoT. Sure. So if you think of um, edge all the way up to to to, to cloud and hosting and, and data and insights. Okay. Fantastic. And um, on the virtual raptor side, talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So virtual raptor is a relative new product in our in our space. Um, maybe the best way to describe virtual raptor is to kind of explain how it came about and why sure. we have this product definitely um so we we started getting involved in some large um, iot deployments where we have thousands of gateways and many more thousands literally hundreds of thousands of of devices connected to these gateways and they're all streaming telemetry into um into a single point in our in our cloud platform okay. and it pretty much became obvious that um uh, maybe this isn't always sustainable, especially if you take a look at all the load that we're processing. Right. Um, just for that one specific use case that I'm thinking of, we are processing between three to four billion uh, telemetry package, uh, packets um, every month. Okay. So um, another pain point was that customers didn't feel quite comfortable breaking out from gateways to, to, the, to the cloud um, for security reasons. So they would prefer to keep that all in their own network. Um, and uh, putting in place things like VPNs and DMZs wasn't really ideal at creating a single point of failure. So what we did is we came about with um, Virtual Raptor. Um, and initially the idea was to just connect um, virtual devices, so not, not wired devices, yeah. um, and get that into our platform. But we quickly realized that this is an ideal solution for connecting all our gateways, our own gateways as well, and mm. streaming all that information through. So um, yeah, now we deploy Virtual Raptor on premises with our customers within their network. Um, so it's safe and secure. Um, so the device to gateway to Virtual Raptor is nice and secure on the customer's network. And then I break out from there and then um, 
you know, just managing the security from there is much easier than uh, controlling it from thousands of uh, gateways. Yeah, fantastic. That um, that's really interesting. And and how long has the product been around for? We pretty much launched it last year. Okay. Um, so it's been in development a little bit longer. Okay. Um, and we have been running a few few closed betas, but uh, it's generally available since last year. And so out of curiosity, being a company down in South Africa, um, do you all have any specific use cases or kind of target audiences that you are focused on? And I'm also just generally curious what the perception is like when you speak with companies being a company in South Africa that's focused in IoT and kind of how that is usually handled or perceived, I guess, um, which I'm sure is a, a, you know, a little bit different than um, some of the other guests that I've spoken to. And I'd love to hear a little bit more about kind of how that works. Sure. Yeah, we're not just South Africa based anymore. Um, okay. In 2019, we, we opened a, an office in um, in Europe, as well as one in um, the USA. Fantastic. So we, we are servicing um, Africa, uh, basically many, many countries in, in Africa, as well as yeah. Europe, as well as uh, Northern, Northern Americas. Um, yeah, look, it, it is sometimes a bit challenging um, when you're South African based. Um, and not not coming from the well-known um, countries sure. that we, you know, technology is typically known for. But um, you know, winning awards help. Um, yeah. We've been winning quite a few. Um, we are being recognised by bigger companies like Gardner for for some of our, our products. Mm. And um, yeah, it's 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 been a tough journey early on. Um, but we. As we gain traction and we deliver more and more projects, it becomes easier to to show sure. people what we have and uh, use that as a springboard. Tell me about the um, kind of the IoT industry landscape, kind of what's going on in, in Africa in general. Like that's not a conversation that I get to have a lot about kind of what the landscape looks like, what the adoption is like, you know, what are the focus use cases, things like that. Like what, what is what's what's have you seen is really unique and special about IoT uh, in South Africa? Yeah, I guess uh, each region within Africa sort of has its own flavor. Um, okay. So, so Africa is quite open to um, adopting new technology, hmm. um, which has served us well. Um, we we do play in, like I said, other countries within Africa, like Botswana, Mozambique, okay. Kenya, Egypt, Tanzania. There's quite a few number of countries where we're involved. Um, but each one has its own and. and um, culture and, and way of going about things. Um, we we obviously have some um, more, um, I would say, industrial use cases here than maybe okay. in some of the other countries, um, because we have mining here, which is a, mm -hmm. a, a very good one to, to to work on. We're quite, quite strong in mining in South Africa, so that's a natural space for us. But having a platform, we, we play in many, many um, industries, um, you know, smart spaces, buildings, sure, cities, sure. Um, security, automotive, telco, uh, oil and gas. Um, this is really no, no really end or constraint in terms of how we we uh, approach things. That's fantastic. Um, one of the topics I wanted to bring up, and this kind of ties into listing out those different areas of focus for you all, is around integrations within within IoT. So anytime an IoT solution is brought into to a company, there's usually some level of integration with existing business systems um, and, and the way they do things. And I wanted to hear from you all what ex on the experience side, what you all have seen as far as um, how integrations are really playing a role in the success of IoT deployments. Um, and we can dive a little bit further after that. It's actually an interesting topic that's how the company started. Um, so we we very early on realized that you know it's not just us; it's it's everybody basically struggling with that, especially that edge integration uh, component. So the company was built on a product called Raptor. Raptor is okay. our edge technology, and uh, we actually have a patent called SDDI, which is Software Defined Device Integration which allows us to repurpose a single port into whatever we need, basically. Um, to give you an example, um, we could use a USB port and repurpose that for I2C or S232, or whatever we needed, basically. Um, and that's how the company was built. We, we built it bottom up. 
Uh, I know many IoT companies started uh, top down, you know, hosting something sure, and then going sure. from there. Um, we really started at the edge, um, and that's that's how we build our success up. So, integration for us is still key. Um, we still feel that we have a excuse the pun an edge on our competitors in that space um, because of the, the strength of Raptor. Um, yeah, so it's. Um, it is something that is getting easier now and again with uh, yep. newer devices, um, but I think the strength lies with us in terms of legacy devices. So we do uh, prevent people from having to have to rip and replace and replace right. the existing right. investment. So if you look at something, especially in like in a mining industry where some of these devices are, you know, they they many millions of dollars of equipment. Sure. And they've got a lifespan of 20 to 30 years. It's not ideal to try and replace any of that. Right, right. That makes a lot of sense. And talk to me a little bit about kind of how integrations have evolved over over the years that you've been kind of in the space. Doesn't that necessarily be specific to your company, but just generally what you've seen of how IoT has evolved to help integrations be more seamless, be easier, be something that um, it's just kind of table stakes when it comes to uh, building something that that is, is a success when it comes to IoT. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, early on, the idea of having to integrate into something was maybe not that well accepted. Okay. Um, when we do approach suppliers and customers now um, with the idea of integration, it's they're more open to it. So sometimes they didn't want to share the secret source of how to actually integrate with some of these um, devices. Um, so at least from that point of view, it's it's um, a different mindset and we, we do get access to, to equipment to be able to integrate. Um, you see your basic patterns evolving. I mean, protocols are pretty standard. Um, there's many of them, but it's pretty standard across um, certain types of devices, groups of devices. So I guess once you've got the protocol down, then creating a specific device integration as mm -hmm. a device driver is, is easier. Um, and as you expand, your your set or your um, your library of integrations it becomes easier when you get to the next customer you can reuse a lot of the existing and then the gap is smaller to integrate so yeah it's it's making it the speed to implementation easier fantastic and and tell me a little bit about the the overall challenges to implementation so you know when you or other companies kind of engage with a client about integrating their current processes, systems, devices, you name it, into a new solution. What are the biggest challenges that usually are present and um, and how do you kind of approach overcoming them? Yeah, I guess it's the, the typical um, topics in IoT, um, things like cost, um, security, um, different mindsets. So it's getting getting customers on board um, on this journey, convincing them it is possible that IoT does provide something different. Okay. It's, it, it's not a SCADA implementation. It is something more. Right. And, uh, and, and convincing them by, uh, well, sometimes going through many workshops to prove that um, we have the technology and we have the security and they, and they, they can uh, come with us on this journey. Tell, talk to me a little bit about security there. You mentioned it um, on the security side when it comes to integration. What's important to be thinking about? You know, how is how is that kind of approached? Um, you know, a lot of listeners out there are probably wondering when I if I'm going to adopt IoT and I want to integrate with my systems. Okay, it seems like that's becoming more seamless every day. But on the security side, how is that being taken into account when you're integrating? You know, legacy systems, devices, you name it, in with a new solution. Where does security kind of fit in and how is that kind of approached? Yeah, security is is, is very front of mind in every implementation. Um, okay. So you, you do have the, the layers that you can secure um, quite well, and those layers are generally more exposed to um, to attacks um, because they, are, they might be hosted in clouds where they are accessible. Um, I guess the simplest form of security is just not to expose, um, say, a gateway to the internet. So mm -hmm. keep keep it keep it away from uh, possible attack surfaces. 
Um, a lot of devices don't have any security, so it's just, just not possible to secure that device um, if you don't add some sort of bump in the wire, um, which is typically uh, some sort of, sort of gateway. So you have a little bit of unsecured uh, connection between the actual device and the gateway, but then you just focus on securing your gateway, making sure that the software that runs on the gateway and the operating system is not accessible and preferably not to expose that to, to the internet. But if you mm -hmm. have to, then looking at those layers as well, making sure that uh, you're well secured. Fantastic. Um, last question I have before we wrap up here is around, uh, for our listeners who are trying to better understand how they can prepare for adoption, when it comes to integration, when it comes to security, um, I guess maybe focus on integration here for a second. What advice do you have for them on how they can kind of prepare and plan for the necessary pieces that are going to be required when they engage with a company like yours? Um, is there something they can be doing or thinking early on to help future-proof things that they're doing or help plan um, the compatibility that certain things are going to have as they move forward and potentially explore adopting IoT? Yeah, I guess future-proof is a very important bit there. Um, look look for suppliers that could provide you with that future uh, proofing. Um, okay. look, for, look for somebody that can use preferably the existing devices that you already have within your environment. Um, it's not necessary to replace everything. Um, sure. It is it's quite expensive to do that. Um, but where you do have to augment, um, look for suitable devices that, that could provide you with um, the specific information in your use case. Okay, great. Well, this has been a conversation that I've we've definitely needed to have with it for our audience around integrations, um, how security kind of plays into it. It's something that is top of mind for a lot of people, but it's not most common thing that um, our experts that we've had on the show before have been talking about. So I really appreciate you taking the time today to kind of dive into not only what you all have going on at IoT.next, but at the same time, the integration side, how important it is, the impact it has on success overall, and also how you're all approaching it. I think this has been, been a great conversation for our audience to really understand what's going on. So thanks again for your time. Thanks for having me, Ryan. It was an interesting conversation. Appreciate it. Absolutely. The last thing I do want to do, though, before you leave is for our audience to learn more about your company and kind of everything going on there. Um, what's the best way to kind of stay in the know, stay up to date, contact, follow up, all that kind of good stuff? Well, I think the uh, best is to get in contact with us. Um, go to our website, uh, www.iotnxt.com, and uh, yeah, get in touch with us. Um, we're always uh, quite happy to engage with new customers and partners. We've got an extensive partner network as well globally. So sure. yeah, just reach out to us. And any uh, any new things on the horizon that we should be on the lookout for? Uh, we've got a, a jam-packed <laughs> roadmap. <laughs> Always exciting. We're actually busy right. um, refreshing our what we call our version three with the uh, version four technology. Okay. Um, and uh, making it much more user friendly. You know, customers are becoming accustomed to to very slick consumer apps. Yep. So we, we're looking into bringing that to business as well. Fantastic. Well, Andre, this has been a great conversation. Again, like I've already said, um, I appreciate your time and look forward to getting this out to our audience. Thanks. Appreciate it, Brian. All right, everyone. Thanks again for watching that episode of the IoT for All podcast. If you enjoyed the episode, please click the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and be sure to hit the bell notification so you get the latest episodes as soon as they become available. Other than that, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.